In this video, we are going to look at the take and drop functions of Excel. And these functions are quickly becoming some of my favorites. And that takes some doing. These functions are here to shape your arrays. And if you're a fan of dynamic array formulas, which if you watch this channel, you probably are, you're going to love these functions. And I tell you the best thing about them, they are super easy to use. Let's check them out. Now I've got this data on screen. It's a table named TBL products. You can see in the first column we have product names and then we've got some weeks. And I wanna work on the idea that this data is dynamic. The number of products may increase and more likely the number of weeks will also increase and is constantly updating each week. So our goal in this first example is to return the final column of values from that table. To do this, I can use the take function and both the take and drop functions both have the same arguments. We'll see examples of both in this video, but they require three arguments, two at a minimum. The first is your data. Where is the data you want to take or drop rows and columns from, known as the array. You then have to specify how many rows and or columns you want to take from the beginning or end of your data set. So for this example, the array is my table called TBL products. I'll do a following example without a table, but with a table being a naturally dynamic structure, it makes sense to use dynamic array formulas on them. Working with ranges can be a little bit more awkward. Now on the pressing of a comma, it will ask me how many rows I want to take. And in this example, I want all of them. So it's a redundant question and I can press my comma to bypass it. Then for how many columns, a positive number would indicate a number of columns from the beginning of the data set and a negative value would be how many columns from the end. So if I put a negative one, that means the final column. So closing the bracket and pressing enter will return the values from that final column. I can now even quickly do exactly the same thing, but working off the table's header row. These are some of the many reasons that I do love working with tables, comma, comma, minus one, and that's going to return that header for the final column. Take a note that that first value for the control club sandwich is 224. In our data, you can see that 224 value for week nine. And for the purposes of demonstration, if I just move week four's values as a pretend week 10, and then we come and check out our formula, we do indeed have week 10 values. So performing typical tasks such as the last seven days, the last 12 months, the last row. These are tasks that are easily accomplished with this new take function. It returns a spill range. So if I want to know the sum just above, that's simply a case of summing the spill range returned from the take function with the values. And working on that idea, if I want to know the last six months values, well, that would be a case of using the sum function or this could be any aggregation or indeed any function, along with that take and using my table here, just as before, I can ask it for a negative six. So my apologies, it says months there, I mean weeks for this example, but this would be the last six columns, i.e. last six weeks in this context. I need another close bracket there for sum, and that is the sum of the last six weeks of values. So let me update that quickly to weeks. And now let's imagine that in the next example, I want to sum the last six weeks again, but this time for a specific product, such as the formula fudge brownie. And I've got a drop down list there so somebody can change that product if they wanted to. Now working with this idea, we can use an XLOOKUP function 
or whatever your favorite may be, to look for that value down the TBL products product column. Getting in a bit of a mess there with my formula. And for the return array, I want to return all of the values relating to that product. Now at the moment, if I was just to put in TBL products and look at closing off this XLOOKUP function, that's going to return all of the values from that row. And you can see that that naturally includes the product name. So if I want the last six weeks, that's not necessarily a problem for me because coming back to this formula, I can use my take function just as before and I can extract those last six weeks and then throw that into a sum function. And I've already demonstrated that, so let me just leave the six weeks on screen. You know what comes next. But let's imagine that I wanted to sum all of those values. And in the case of a sum function, having a product name there is not actually going to inhibit it. But remember, this could be a different function. So this seems like a nice opportunity to mention that maybe instead of the take function, maybe my goal is to drop that header. So I could use the drop function here. And with this drop function, I'm gonna change my minus six to one to say, can you just drop that first column? So now it's returning all of those 10 weeks as it is right now. And I could bring that into a sum function or any other function. So I'll just quickly add that sum in there just to get rid of that spill range on the screen. And I mentioned that we don't need to work off tables here. So let's see another example. So I'm back in this data set and this time the table is removed. Now to make my life a little bit easier with the upcoming formulas, I've quickly set up a couple of named ranges. Now one of them is named RNG products, and it's simply a reference to column B, where the products are. And then I've got RNG weeks, which is a reference to the weeks. And you can see I've extended that range a little bit. I've gone as far as column S here, because remember, I don't know how many weeks there are, it's changing every week, and then possibly resetting at the beginning of a year. And a table is a naturally dynamic structure, but a range is not. So I've overcooked it a little bit in my, with my named area. Now I want to write a formula here that's gonna produce the same results as before. Now I'm going to use a HStack function because I want to do this within one formula, stack both columns in a single formula. With HStack, for the first column, I'm going to use a function called trim range to trim the range of RNG products. So thinking back to that data, I had a blank row at the top of my named area and lots of blank rows below in preparation for additional product names or maybe even less product names. But trim range will remove those blanks from the start and end of that named area. Now for the second range, this is where I want the final column. So I can use my take function here. And when it asks me for the array, I'm gonna use my trim range to remove any blanks around it. And I'm going to tell it to use RNG weeks. So that's going to be array this time as an alternative to this table that I had before. Then it's just a case of carrying on as before, ignoring that rows argument, negative uh, six there. I actually want negative one, don't I, for this example, to get that final column. And if I close off this take function, let me jump back up to my formula bar and I'll close off my HStack. And when I press enter, I've now got this single formula, no table this time, but with a little help from trim range, and most importantly, take, I'm able to construct this report. Seeing the result in cell C2 there is really just another take function doing the business of taking the final column from the spill range below. For a final couple of quick examples, 
I've got two group by function examples here. I love the new group by function. And looking at this first one, I've got a descending order of the total sales for each product. If I click within the formula cell, you can see I've used zero to remove the grand total and a negative two to order it by that second column, the total column. But maybe I don't want all of the products shown. Maybe I'm trying to create a top 10 list. So if I want the first 10 rows, the top 10 rows, you know the drill here, it's a case of using my take function. And for the rows argument, I enter a positive 10 for the first 10. I can ignore that columns argument and I'm pressing enter, I've now only got the first 10. So creating things like top N or bottom N reports just got made super simple with the take function. But let's check out this second example where I've got a group by function, but it's got two aggregations, a sum and a percent of. And when you do this using the HStack function, it assumes that you want these headers. But I don't because I've got my own ones. So how can we remove them? Well, that sounds like a job for drop. I can just pop to this function, add drop at the start, and on the end, just tell it to drop that first one row. I don't need to specify any columns right now. Close this off and press enter, and I've removed those default function headers that occur when you do these multiple aggregations with group by or pivot by. So they are a few examples of the take and drop functions, super simple functions, yet so, so important in this array era of Excel to shape our arrays to what we need and perform very common tasks in Excel, such as taking the last seven rows, the last 12 columns, or removing things like header rows. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you will receive the latest videos at this channel. Thank you for watching. Take care. Until next time.